Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store and today we're going to talk about live streaming, in particular all about the TCS TV live experience. Good evening everyone, we are live. Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Evelyn and Dave coming to you live from the Camera Store. Thank you so much for tuning in here tonight for another TCS TV Live. This one is documentary photography. What is live streaming? Live streaming is the ability to watch, create, and share content with anybody anywhere in the world in real time. It really brings the whole world much closer together because you're experiencing things real time with somebody else who can be anywhere in the world. Think weddings or any kind of news reports, things like that where we want to be part of the action and interact with people. We can do this through live streaming. With our TCS TV live show, we really wanted to up the game with a better quality camera and of course better quality audio. And to do that, it was a lot of technical issues that we had to do. Now we've come back to the camera store. I like to think I'm an expert on everything, however I am not. When it comes to live streaming, we have two of TCS TV's live dream team, Drew and Gary, inside the store. I'm going to hand off the channel to them briefly while they talk to you about what they're experts in. Hey TCS TV viewers, you don't normally see us. Uh, that's because I'm Drew Crawford, I'm the newest videographer for TCS TV. I'm Gary, I'm part of the TCS TV live dream team. I want to get that one more tip. <laughs> I'm Gary Chung, I'm uh, part of the TCS TV live stream team. And we're two of the original members, pretty much the original members actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. we, we, we operate in the dark to serve the light, so. Between the two of us, we have about 18 years worth of live streaming experience, both for TCS TV Live as well as outside. We've done a number of personal projects, side projects, various companies all over the place. So hopefully tonight we'll be able to guide you through the, I guess, the history of TCS TV Live. Yes. Where we've started, where we ended up, and how we decided to live stream from the top of a mountain. So roughly about four years ago, Chris and Jordan, back in the day when they're still on, the, on our channel here, uh, kindly asked me if I knew anything about live streaming. Sort of gently dragged me into this. Uh, this is even before I even started at the store here. Fun little fact, they didn't really know what they were getting into as well as they kind of didn't want to get into it. They just started with a phone, simple content with a, with a single mic. And then going up from there, we started, started on Facebook. Then we did a little bit of Instagram. And then we decided to go to YouTube. When we first started, there was a lot of issues, still is a lot of issues streaming off a smartphone. There was massive interlacing at the very start. Compression, lack of audio inputs. Uh, the delay. The delay is worse. Yes. Keep forgetting that. It's I like 15 it seconds onto YouTube. 20. 20 second delay doesn't sound like much, but it is a lifetime when you're live. So that was a big problem. Chris and Jordan kind of skipped the single camera bit and just went straight from phone to multi-camera, yeah. which was hilarious. But at the time, it kind of made sense because there wasn't really the Elgato cam length. There was the, I think we used the Blackmagic Intensity shuttle for like one stream to for, see. For one camera. Yeah, yeah, for single camera. And the cool thing is, is if you are looking at single cameras, you can go with something like the GH5 Mark II now. Yeah, that was a big thing. So the GH5 Mark II. Uh, internal live streaming capabilities direct off of the camera itself. So you just hook it up to a phone, the application takes care of the rest. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of that. Like almost every company has kind of inputted a, a webcam. Yeah, so the cool thing is, is lately, I think because of the pandemic and everything that's happening around, around the world, uh, majority of the manufacturers have what they call a webcam utility now. Uh, I'm running Sony right now, so I'm using web, uh, Sony webcam utility. Canon has theirs, Nikon has theirs, Panasonic has theirs, even Fuji has theirs. And it's, it's opened up a lot of options for a lot of people because they already have these thousands of dollars worth of uh, equipment. Almost immediately after that, we switched uh, to the Blackmagic A10 Television HD Studio. Yes. And generally we were using up almost all the inputs on the television switcher. Which still required which a a capture card. Yeah, which still required a capture card, but that was because we foolishly did not realize that the program output was SDI. 
It yes. didn't have a USB output. It didn't have a. It had a single HDMI output, but it was mostly for multi view. That just <laughs> that became a adventure in of itself. When we decided to go uh, expand again and wanted to go back into YouTube and do stream on YouTube again, we started building that back out. So now we're using an FX3, two save and S3s, all the G, both our GH5s directly and any type of input directly into the A10 Mini, and we can actually just switch out directly right off of it. So the Blackmagic A10 Mini uh, has a single USB-C output, and so you can throw it into softwares like OBS really easily. Um, on that topic, actually, <laughs> software, <laughs> uh, we're still running OBS. We've been running OBS since the very beginning, and originally it was just because OBS was really all there was for free streaming software that was kind of worth it. XSplit and vMix have really stepped up their game in the last little while, so we're starting to look into better software options, but for just the longest time, it was OBS or nothing. Like The, the biggest thing I'll, I'll, I'll tell everyone with, with uh, open source, source software, uh, be super careful. Uh, if one build might work one day, the other day might, it might not, which we've run into multiple times. Too many and, times. <laughs> yeah, too many times that gave us close to heart attacks. The one thing, and well, I'll let you know now going forward, especially in the beginning, was like we, were, we, we mentioned this earlier, was audio. You can have a great video and horrible audio and people will stop watching it. You can have passable. passable video and really good audio and people will still watch it because the thing is you can use it as a podcast to listen to even. Um, that's the biggest thing that we, we discovered. Yeah, um, and for audio, like, I want to say we went through four or five different iterations of audio before we got anything that we were happy with. The, the biggest tip we, we've discovered as well is keep it simple for audio. Try to as much as you can. And the, well, and the evolution of audio gear in the past. Oh, actually, that's true, because nowadays we're using Rode, what is it, the Rode Wireless Let's Go, go 2s. And the beauty of these guys are like two transmitters to one, one receiver. So you can have, for example, both of us on camera and not have to worry about wiring a second piece, up, uh, a, a second mic up to another hard, uh, piece of hardware, then into another, into the camera. We can plug them directly into the Blackmagic ATEM. And so everything is taken care of by that one piece of kit. And to be honest, I can't actually think of a way that we could do the setup that we did in the Rockies that you kind of condensed into the Pelican case yeah. without, I can't actually think of a way we'd be able to do that without the Mini and without the Rode 2s. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff we were, we're running down is like tighter kit, smaller stuff. The hardware we're talking about is from the, the, the last live stream we did uh, with Matt Scoville, Dunn I did it, uh, Kath, uh, smart smart as well uh, and just the the setup we were running let's start with the the bit of live in the Rockies and how that what the concept was so the concept basically started where Evelyn came to me one day and was like hey there's this Sony Xperia phone that has an HDMI input which is crazy most devices have an HDMI output for monitors and things like that but HDMI input is very rare. And I just kind of passingly was like, hey, well, the A10 Mini has an HDMI out. We could run multiple cameras off the A10 and run the A10 into the phone. And in theory, we could run everything off of data and we'd have a multi-camera live stream in the field. And I said that as a kind of like, oh, this would be a cool concept that we could play around with. Um, I think it was a week, not yeah. even a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Evelyn mentioned to us, like, oh, Matt Scoville mentioned, like, hey, we can work all together and go into doing a workshop in the Rockies that is, that is live. Um, and that was the biggest thing. It's like, okay, cool. This is the most interesting thing we can run into. And at that moment in time, and I still think right now still, I think we're the only one that's, ones that have done it. Um, I've yet to see anybody online, especially on YouTube, that has gone through a multicam switcher directly into the into Xperia, the Xperia Pro. Pro. Now, with that being said, it is a three thousand dollar phone, um, and it's been and we limited access to the U.S. and the rest of the world right now. We can't even get the phone in Canada. We had to 
thank you, Sony, Sony <laughs> USA, Sony. for sending us the phone. Um, it was a godsend. With the phone, with the A10 Mini, and with the Rode Goes, it basically created a package where these guys were able to take a Pelican case that Gary just Velcroed everything into, and they were able to live stream from the top of the Sulphur Mountain gondola. Band, gondolas. Now, caveat to that is, this basically ties everything together. Earlier we were talking about have backups, and the reason is pretty simple. What we were doing is we were streaming a stream. So Gary and the guys up on the mountains were using the smartphone to stream live to a private YouTube channel and then sending us the link so that on a separate computer I could pull up that stream and display capture it and send that into our ATEM which would then send the signal to you guys on the TCS TV live YouTube. Um, so <laughs> if that sounds like some things could go wrong you're 100% correct. You were nerve wracked. Oh, it was, yeah. We're 15 minutes to live. I don't have audio coming from the guys in the Rockies yet. And so, yeah, it's those moments where uh, your heart rate goes from like resting 70 to 120 real quick. Now, with this being said, I tested everything the night before. Everything was 100% the night before. Everything was great. Uh, but, you know, Day of jitters. Day of jitters or anything of that, you know. I guess that kind Murphy's of, Law, yeah. the day of. That kind of brings it to the, uh, the biggest part of live stream. You guys have probably noticed that Evelyn is predominantly hosting the TCS TV live stuff. And one of the things that she always likes to say is, now this is live, so anything can happen. That was born from the fact that, yeah, pretty much anything can happen. And the best Thing that we've kind of learned is you have to be ready to problem solve. You have to be already thinking of a solution while you're having a problem and have at least one backup for almost everything because for some reason when it comes to live, when it comes to going live, things that normally wouldn't go wrong somehow go wrong. Like your Holland HDMI uh, we transmitters. The Holland transmitters were working, and all of a sudden turned around and was like, well, they decided to stop working. Like, one of them decided to work working. Literally the day before, Gary was in the store. We're testing the Pelican case with everything. We have all of the cameras lined up with the transmitters. And they were working. Feeds and everything. And then next the, day. The worst thing, uh, the other tip I can give everybody is buy extra HDMI cables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cannot stress that so much, especially if you are looking at live streaming, especially with the micro HDMI cables. Buy as many as you go as you can. The same thing with full-size ones. We've gone through two, three in the store here during our live sessions here. Those are the little things that will get you and just, just have something ready for it. But that's also, I guess, part of the, part of the charm. Because since it is live, anything can happen. And I feel like even though things can go wrong, there's a certain level of connection, a certain level of uh, the human factor that kind of comes through live that isn't maybe present in just normal videos. And so, you know, we're gonna continue to go live for as long as, the, as, long as Evelyn and Dave are willing to uh, continue to, well, do I think, that. I think we got a lot more coming. Oh yeah. Um, On that, uh, Big thank you to Dunna from Dunna Did It. He shot an amazing behind the scenes uh, kind of interview with Matt Scoville about his original vision. Matt Scoville was the linchpin in all of this. Go check out Dunna's video. It's really well done and really kind of showcases the, I guess, intensity or the stress that well, it's these the guys were feeling. It. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. So that pretty much wraps it up for what we wanted to talk about. Now, we do have to thank a lot of people for getting us up to this point because we haven't done it alone. First and foremost, Panasonic. They've been there since the very beginning. They're still using the GH5 as our primary shooting camera, so big shout out to them. I would like to personally thank Sony USA, Pursuit, uh, Matt Scoville, Cat Smart, and Anthony for, for helping us out for the uh, the night of the rock, the 
Night in the Rockies. Night in the Rockies live stream. And of course, the camera store and everyone who is involved. So Evelyn, Dave, Jeff, Chris, myself, Gary. There's so many people, it's crazy. And so, yeah, thank you to everyone. Maybe we'll see you again, but until then, back to you, Dave. Oh, it's good to have the channel back in my hands. Those guys did a pretty decent job for guys who spend most of their time behind the camera. I hope you learned a few things about live streaming. And of course, if you want to check out that Rocky Mountain live video, you certainly can. It's still on our channel. We're also having a live event August 4th with all of these characters from the Live in the Rockies. So if you have any comments or concerns, you can address them there. But please leave comments down below. Follow us on Instagram and please subscribe. Hit the notification bell and we'll catch you again next time. I'm sure something in there will work. Just Julio. Oh, hey, thanks for sticking around. If you want to check out more recent content, click up here. And if you are Canadian, you want to shop local, check out the camera store down here.